Hello and welcome to Misunderstood, the show for all you culturally and politically misunderstood ladies and gents. We are your hosts. I'm Kat. And I'm Nat. And today we're going to be talking about toxic moms, looking at you, Kris Jenner. And then, of course, we're going to switch things up a little and talk about the lighthearted topic of the correlation between porn addicts and murder. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we're going to start things off with our patented culture shock moment of the week. Take it away, Kat. Here's the shock. We have new designs in the mom store. Oh, Ooh. my God. Hey. This one was designed by my beautiful friend here, Natasha. That's me. Yep. And this one here was designed by the lovely, lovely Catherine Krasanowski it's sitting true. beside me. I, I think they can read it. But the it says, only <laughs> climate crisis is how hot I am. Yeah. And this is obviously saying abort government. Because it should be aborted, it should be. I think. You know what they say is terminate. Mm -hmm. they say terminate ter the terminate. government. Yeah. Pregnancy. Terminate it. Yeah. Yeah. Government it's is toxic. pregnant with power and yeah. it must be aborted. <laughs> um, anyway, so you can get our merch right now at misunderstoodmerch.com. And if you use the code misunderstood10, you get 10% off your first purchase. So please buy it. Please buy it for yourself. Not for us. Yeah, for you. For you. And for Rebel News because, you know. Yeah. Well, that's how we keep the lights on here. Yeah. Um, and you can make a stir in public settings in which you wear the shirts. Wow. It's going to be great. Let's do it. Let's piss people some people are, off. People are going to love you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I think that was good. We're, we're going to move on. We're going to move Let's on. Let's talk about Toxic Mommy. Let's do it. Let's so do it. So this first article, um, I think this is the the one article that we're going to like Yeah, reference the yeah. most. Yeah. Um, so this is from Evie Magazine. You know we love Evie. Sorry, my hair is just, oh. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> um, the article title is, Thanks to Kris Jenner, the Kardashian sisters are the definition of mommy issues. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Yes, it she, was an uh, interesting read. It was an interesting 12-minute read. Yeah, 12 minutes. Um, and I don't think we want to spend too much time specifically on Chris necessarily. Not necessarily. I think that she's just the perfect example of a toxic mom because I think a lot of people are like, oh, a toxic mom, you know, I have a list here of some like telltale signs that a mom is toxic and it's like controlling, manipulative, humiliates you, invalidates your feelings, etc. But I also think there's a side that's a lot more sinister where you can't necessarily see it as clearly that mm -hmm. a mom is toxic. Mm -hmm. And I think that Kris Jenner is the perfect example because she's overbearing. Um, she's She wants to be her kid's best friend. You well, know? she like she like markets her children as products. I'd and, call it exploiting. Yes, them, exploiting. Frankly, yes, yeah, she exploits her children. Definitely, and um, maybe they like it though. That's I mean, we'll get into that. Yeah, I think they I probably that like up. it a yeah. little too much, which yeah. is also like hello. Red Alert. flag. Oh, that's a red flag. <laughs> red Alert. flag. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, she takes 10%, a 10% cut of all of her kids' business. Amateur. Yeah, she's the... She's so rich. She is and so she rich. she never had to show her vagina. Yeah, it's true. She just let Kim Genius. do it for her. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when and she's worth $190 million. Now, I wonder if she was worth that when the show, when that sex tape was released. I have a feeling no. not so much. Yeah, and she's famously quoted as saying... Um, I wrote it down, but it's like she said, I never have spent a dollar of my own or I've never worked or something. Like, what did she say? Um, I, I don't know, but that I wrote it. That must be nice, Chris. Yeah. Must be nice. Mm -hmm. Um, Should we give a little context then about her? Yeah, let's give some context. Okay. Right. Do you have notes? I have a few notes. Okay, you got a few notes? Yeah, I got some notes. Let's All right. Do it. Take it away. Okay. Yeah. Well, Kris Jenner was only 17 years old when she met her first husband, Robert Kardashian. That's young. And she was apparently dating someone else at the time. Yeah. Classic. Classic. Chris. Um, she, okay, here's the quote. My right here. Yeah, let's She's back quoted track. as saying uh, she's never paid for anything in her life. Gosh, that's the dream, isn't Cute. it? Isn't that's that the sweet? dream. Um, great. Uh, so I guess her claim to fame, though, is through <laughs> the famous O.J. Simpson trial, which took place in 1995, where her husband, Robert Kardashian, her now ex-husband, uh, was one of the lawyers. And apparently, Chris had a rumored affair. Was with... he a lawyer or just a friend? He was a lawyer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, he is a well was a lawyer. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know. I thought he wasn't actually one of the OJ Simpson. Oh, maybe lawyers. not. I think he's just a lawyer and and they're family, family friends. Yeah, yeah, I think you might be right. Yeah. Um, because they were friends with his, uh, OJ's wife. Yeah, and they went uh, on Nicole vacation Simpson. together. Right. And there is a rumor, unsubstantiated. Uh, that there was a steamy hot tub sesh between Kris Jenner and O.J. Simpson, which led to the divorce from Robert Kardashian. Nice. And Unsubstantiated, you but and you know, widely known. I don't know about you, but to me, that just sounds like a completely ethical woman. Yeah, she sounds great. She and sounds lovely. She's also known, uh, she's been open about having a multiple year, affairs. Yes, at least one other affair that she's acknowledged that lasted two years while she was married. Right. As well. So 
she's she's an upstanding citizen. And then, of course, you know, after her messy divorce uh, where she was cut off financially from Robert, uh, she married Bruce, now Caitlyn Jenner, five months, I think, after six months, six months after they started dating, um, really? which was like six months after her divorce. Too. Right. Yeah. So like that's fast. so I guess sh- money was tight and she yeah. just needed a new boo to yeah. to buy her some Dior. I don't know. Transgender or not, she needed a new partner. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. um, so basically, I just think the like she's a bad she's set been setting a bad example for her daughters forever. Yeah, and you know we we don't know what's in her heart, and like maybe of she not. has maybe she has atoned for her, her past sins? behavior. Yeah, yes, like yeah. it's possible. I've oh, never heard, sure. I've never heard her speak on it. No, saying you know I was a horrible person and I did this and this and now I've seen the light and I want to move forward with my life. Like that's one thing I've never heard that, but maybe. We can't write it yeah, off. Yeah, no, of like, course. Only God knows, frankly. Exactly. It's yeah, possible no, that for sure. she has, um, you know, atoned for her sins. Maybe not. Yeah. Um, but it was the, you know, we mentioned the, the sex tape release of Kim Kardashian's sex In 2007, tape, yeah. yeah. With Ray J, who I don't really know who that is. Me either. But Kim Kardashian was only 23 at the yeah. time, y'all. She knew him. Yeah. Allegedly. Yeah. Very well. Intimately. <laughs> it's pretty um, intimate. It's just hard to imagine, like, and in, in we're not... Like, this is going to sound judgmental, but it's hard to imagine having a sex tape. It is very difficult <laughs> it's hard for me to imagine. <laughs> and then it's hard to imagine being like, hey, mom, I have this sex tape. And then mom being like, excellent. Like, yeah, because we can profit. Well, and the thing is, like, Kim Kardashian had learned, I think, a lot from Paris Hilton. Yes. Because that's what kind of also made. also released a sex tape. Right. And yeah. Paris Hilton, I mean, I actually think I have a lot of respect for Paris Hilton off the record. But um, <laughs> this is not off on the, the record. record. It's now. on the record now. But <laughs> but um, she, she worked for Paris Hilton. Mm-hmm. And so she was like, well, this made Paris a huge success. I am a D-lister. I want to play with the big wigs mm-hmm. in Hollywood. So mm-hmm. maybe this will work for me too. And I guess there is an um, unauthorized biography of Kris Jenner called Dirty Sexy Money, the unauthorized biography of Kris Jenner, right. where the author claims that Chris was there every step of the way as a middleman was brought in to market it to an adult entertainment company, it being the sex tape. Uh, one insider told the, author- the authors that they'd even seen Kris Jenner's signature on the contract because basically it's illegal for a porn yeah. company to release this a video, a sex tape like that without the performers or yeah. consent. So performers. <laughs> performers <laughs> consent. Yeah, so they needed this signed, uh, they needed a signature from Kim Kardashian. So they can't just like take it and, you know, I'm just reading what you said. Yeah. But they can't just take it and post it on the internet without their consent. Yeah. So not like Pornhub, which we'll talk about. But. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, really? So someone from the family knew and there was a lawsuit. Uh, apparently the Kardashian family, the Kardashian Jenner family sued the production company, but they settled out of court privately and no one knows the details of it. So it's, you know, Sus. not outside the realm of possibility right. that it was a it was just a an act right. to be like how dare you that's so i'm so embarrassed yes. oh outrage shock yeah. yes yeah. Thanks no for, for sure the, thanks for the the show though yeah no definitely <laughs> yeah and then of course like after the this debacle kind of came to be that they signed with um What's his name's production Ryan company? Seacrest. Ryan Seacrest production company. And then, and hence, Keeping Up with the Kardashians was, was born. born. And it's still alive today. Yes, yes. Under and a they're new name. so rich. They are so rich. And it's so HD. The production isn't. Th- anyway, that's beside the point. But <laughs> so, okay. What does this have to do? Everyone watching this is going to be like, I don't care about the Kardashians. But what does this have to yes, do with toxic do. moms? Well, first of all, you all secretly care. Because if you comment about something, you clearly care. Yeah. Um, so there's this quote from the article. So what's the proof, I guess, that Chris has set a bad example? So although they've certainly had much success in their careers, unfortunately, the same can't be said for their romantic relationships and mental health. Up until this point, not a single one of them has had a successful marriage. Three of them have kids with men who weren't their husbands. And Kylie Jenner's appearance has transformed dramatically over the years to reveal what some would say is a completely different person. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Kim, Kim's had three failed marriages. Yeah. Courtney was in like a nine year relationship with Scott mm-hmm. where they had children. Um, Chloe keeps dating cheaters and going back to them. That's really sad. And Kylie got pregnant at 20 outside of marriage. Mm-hmm. And her Travis and Scott, is she's like, had a new face put on her face. She got a new she face. Con- totally new face. Like they've all had work done. Yeah. All of them. But she's got a, a totally new face. It's, it's like, really sad. It is sad. It's terrifying. And she's so young. My God. Yeah. So, I mean, these are not I know they're like the, the article says they're financially successful, but like are, they're not healthy people yeah they're not productive 
normal people. No. Like they can't they can't do what like normal people are supposed to do, which is get yeah. married and have babies. Yeah. And set a good example for your children. Mm -hmm. And I think it's Chris Jenner's fault. Yes. Well, yes. I mean, their father is no longer here too. Apparently, um, he was super against being in the limelight. And yeah. he really valued hard work. And I will say like, Anyone who knows me knows my family. We have a rich history of divorce. Like my parents have been divorced like a thousand times each, like a billion times. It's it's a it's a joke. But I would say that's not as I think anyone would say that's not success. Like we're not kidding ourselves and thinking like, oh, the more divorces you have, the better off you are. Like ever, I think, and especially for me, like I hope to have uh, one husband and a family, solid unit. And I think. If people are going to get triggered by saying like, oh, divorce, like I'm the one I should be triggered because, you know, I've I've lived through multiple divorces. But it's like it's no one can argue that that's a nice thing for children. To well, go you through. were a child that went through that. So yeah, you know exactly. Exactly. How these children are going to feel. I mean, I'm as, super messed up. You're she's no, not. I'm she's good. She's turned out great. Um, But like now all of the Kardashians kids are not going to grow up with proper dads yeah. in the house. Like, it's just a mess. It's and, a mess. And to be fair, their dad died. So it's not like, oh. No, I mean like, like their kids. Yes, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, they all have issues with yeah. men, all of the Kardashian. Well, the article Jenner. made a, a comment about how, like, they, they don't have a father in their life. It's like, well, he died. Yeah, like, that's not. He died of cancer. Yeah, that's, that's not really not fair. Really that's not really fair. their fault. <laughs> no, I would not. Plus, like, they really, uh, they really hold him to. Yeah. Like, yeah, they, he's yeah. well revered in that family. Yeah. Um, They really respect him. So. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, um I've, I've, so you've watched the show right yes from the I've, beginning I've never watched it but I know there's this one clip that I did see of a, a great example of toxic mommy where it's like a really early season where Kylie is super young and she's supposed to be in high school and she's like run away from home or something like less dramatic than that but she's walking down the street and Kris Jenner's chasing her with the production company in her SUV and she's like come on talk to me just get in the car and Kylie's like no like she's like having a panic attack she's like no I don't want to go to school mom like just listen to me never listen like yeah uh, Kendall doesn't want to go to school I don't want to go to school but I have panic attacks and her mom is like instead of being like can we cut this scene yeah. like my daughter's having a moment here she they keep it rolling and like yeah. it's hard to imagine that I think Kylie was I mean I'm guessing like 16 at the time like she's still in high school so she couldn't have been more than 18. Yeah, they were very young really when young. they started so the show. I can't imagine that at that age she was like happy to have that moment broadcast on television like we all anyone who's had anxiety knows it's like embarrassing and painful and like you yeah. don't really want that moment to be on tv so to say like oh she was in on it, it's like maybe but like toxic mommy you could have cut the scene you yeah. could have said like that's enough drama for this scene like go f watch kim get her like bikini wax you know like we don't need it's just so toxic it's yeah. so toxic well, your daughter's going through something they were young when they signed on to the show like that they were too young to be able to consent or know what mm. they were signing up for i'm talking about kendall and uh, kylie yeah. like it's just not fair their They're whole like, lives kylie were was like the, nine right that's the thing and yeah. so that means their whole lives have been like, they've been growing up in the spotlight forever that's so not fair like kids just can't consent to that and obviously it's it's clearly screwed them up i mean kendall seems to have come out the most normal but even like, she like i was i saw some article that was like the kardashian i mean they put her into the kardashian like whole yeah like, umbrella but they were like the curse of the kardashians like they apparently even she can't like and keep a man for too long yeah or maybe they can't keep her i don't know what it is yeah but it's no like, it's true she's none of them yeah she i couldn't really name any of her boyfriends yeah. really so i that's a good point um yeah, I don't know. And to be that rich. So I think the point of this conversation is not really necessarily about Chris and the Kardashians per se. It's just that, like, I think a lot of times we talk about toxic masculinity and stuff like that. But toxic motherhood, I think it, there's something to be said about oh, it. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, it goes back to the Oedipal mother. Like, it's a classic right. archetype of the mother who is so controlling and won't let her children grow up because she needs them in her life and she ends up destroying them. Yeah. And I think a lot of millennials suffer through this because... I've seen a lot of like growing up a lot of my not even my friends, but just like my classmates and stuff, their parents, specifically their moms tried so hard to stay young and cool that they mm. were they tried to be their child's friend. No, you know, like, like to, in mean girls. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's like that is a side of toxic motherhood that I don't think we see that much. I mean, Kris Jenner is a perfect example mm -hmm. of that. Um, I mean, like Khloe Kardashian literally lives across the street from her. And sees her every single day. She that's sees her mom every single day. She's not like 90 and dying. Yeah. Like, it's just like, yeah, don't you have a life? life. Yeah. yeah. Like you're a mom too. Anyway. Um, that's crazy. But yeah, like I think like it's just, it's something that I think more people need to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. And I think there are a lot of signs that a lot of people are unaware of. Like it, maybe this isn't toxic 
to you, but it actually is. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? Like, yeah. Do you have the sign? I have the sign. Oh, right. Do you oh, want me to read them? Yes. Yeah, okay. Please. I want to know. I was Do tell. Okay. Um, so some of the signs of a toxic mom that some people may not know. Uh, so she always has to be right. She ignores your boundaries. She enables dependence. She oversimplifies your problems, gets mad at you for being emotional, claims you are overreacting. Every conversation leaves you feeling upset. She minimizes your achievements. She wants to be your best friend. You're the one always apologizing. She is always the victim. She cries to get her way. She's super critical. She lash lashes out when she's upset. She wants you to fix her problems. She wants to control you and your siblings. And you have to walk on eggshells around her. Sounds like a nightmare. Sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. But some of those things seem like they're not that big of a deal. Like, oh, yeah. my mom wants to be my BFF. What's yeah. wrong with that? Well, it's like, well, if you're too dependent on your mom, you're not an independent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we talked about this in terms of uh, Lorelai and Rory Gilmore. Yeah. Like, um, you know, we, I, I, I watched that episode of ours and we were like, Lorelai's the worst mother. She's not the worst. I've been rewatching the show. It's, yeah, she's, she's not she's, the worst, worst mother, yeah. but there are, that exact thing is that she wants to be Rory's best friend. And it's at the detriment of Rory because A, Rory couldn't go to university without having her mom sleep over with her. Like that was embarrassing. Yeah, Rory, it's not cool. Come on. And then just the, the lessons that she learned from her mother were not great in terms of relationships. So um, you have, a mother is not a best friend. It's a mother. It's different. Yeah. Definitely. Your and dog is your best friend. Yeah. And I think a lot of times we see like people when they're in like relationships and stuff, like they, instead of going to their partner, they go to their mom for advice. Yeah. And I actually think that like, that's really unhealthy. About that yeah. Like before. I just yeah. think you need to, I, it, the Bible is pretty clear about this. Man shall leave in father his mother and become one with his wife. I think the same goes for women. Like you need to, of course, maintain a healthy relationship with your parents. You can be friends with your mom. Mm -hmm. Like I'm friends with my parents, mm -hmm. but it's like there needs to be a line. Like they yeah. don't need to know everything. No, yeah. And you don't need to go to them with everything. Yeah. Like no, you know? I've made that mistake in the past where I thought everything in my relationship I had to tell my mom and dad and they're like, oh, wait, you don't need to hear that. Oh, he should do this. It's like, yeah. you guys are both divorced. <laughs> like, right. Like, like I don't need to hear your opinions on this matter. I should be talking to the person in which I'm in a relationship with right. and resolving those issues through communication instead of like and my parents aren't even toxic. It's just like it's not healthy to have your parent as yeah. your best friend. It's just simply not. Yeah, I agree. Should we talk Sorry, about... Sorry, Mom. Sorry, Mom. She doesn't watch the show. <laughs> yeah, well, joke's on her. It's yeah. the best. It's um, the best. Should we uh, move on to yeah. lighter topics? Yep. So well, I just wanted to touch on another aspect. Like, we don't have to talk about the article in total in totality, but another article that we did touch on was this... Um, it's also from Evie. It was online mom mommy cultures can be toxic sometimes. Oh, yes. And it's just like we've all seen, like, you know the term Facebook moms? And I didn't realize, like, I can't imagine being on one of those groups and saying, like, oh, I, I like, I want to have a home birth or something like that. And then women being like, apparently this is a thing where they'd be like, that's dangerous. Like, you're endangering your your child. And, and like, a lot of judgment. Judgment and toxicity. So this article just talks about, like, how to avoid that. And I thought it was interesting because so many of the things that they say are actually just things to avoid in real life. It was, like, some of the art, some of the tips that they had were, like, don't be afraid to block somebody. Yeah. And they're talking about in a mommy culture. It's like, that's a good lesson for anyone. Like in real life, when you have a toxic friend in your world, you get rid of them. I've done yeah. that. It took me a long time to figure that out. But it's like, oh, they're my friend. It's like, you know what? They're toxic. They're they're the kind of person that is happy when I fail. And they yeah. want, they they don't want good things for me. They don't support you. So yeah. you know what I did? I just cut them out of my life. And like, you can do that online. If someone's harassing you online, yeah. mommy or not, like you just block them it's not like we especially in the you know conservative world we think it's such a like a weak thing to do but if someone's harassing you you wouldn't let them into your house yeah you, you wouldn't don't let them into your car you can just block them no um, it's so true um should we maybe talk about then the pro-abortion tiktoker too who yes because there is that other Yuck. so toxic mommy culture um I, ali best stucky claims that she coined this term i don't know if that's true but um it's basically when women mock their kids for social media Ugh. life and Ugh. some people are like, oh, it's just humor. It's uh, it's for fun. It's lighthearted. But kids actually, are going to grow up and sue you. Well, so enjoy. That too. But I also think, don't do you wonder if that creates like a sense of resentment in the mom that then grows and then she becomes a toxic mom as mm -hmm. the child grows yeah. up? Because yeah. I really think, and maybe it has something to do with why abortion is so normal and okay in our society because moms are always talking about how much they hate their kids, calling them like a-holes and stuff. And it's like, obviously kids can be a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean- I don't have kids, but I see little kids screaming at church and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, goodness gracious, there are a lot. But, you know, it's a privilege to be able to have a baby. And I think that we should 
they, they're a blessing and I think we need to consider them that way and society just doesn't seem to want to like there's yeah. such a weird attack on kids and, and there's also that it. like like you mentioned this weird trend of like shaming publicly shaming your child on the internet yeah and so we'll I'll add this video in um later but there's this pro-abortion tiktoker that tells her baby like her newborn baby like a she's beautiful baby yeah like new it's new mm -hmm. brand new and she Spanking says new. I could have killed you she doesn't even say the word aborted she says I could have killed you I chose I didn't but I could have and that's my choice it's like Lady, every single one of our moms could have aborted us. They didn't. They don't need you don't need to shove that in your child's face. Like Yeah, it's it's that's evil. So weird. It's, that would be like God saying, like, I could have killed you. Like, yeah, it's like it's, duh, you could have. Yeah, of obviously. Course. Like duh. It's so toxic and it makes me feel really nervous for the kid growing up because what if that mom doesn't drop it that's, in infancy? That's what I mean. Like maybe like, the kid is even picking up on those like those intentions without because they're nonverbal at this they're so young it yeah. doesn't understand words yet but maybe it understands the feelings and when it is verbal and it can understand words is the mom gonna stop saying that yeah what if what in the kid is bad is she gonna be like you know i could have aborted you i could have killed you like gross yeah that is so gross well especially because like as you said this baby can't speak or really do anything it just needs its mom for mm -hmm. everything right and Love. like kids can't defend themselves no and in any other part of society if you if you're attacking something that can't defend itself you're bullying it yeah. like imagine That's such if, a good point like imagine if you replaced baby with another type of vulnerable person like everyone would be like you can't say that you can't or do like that a kitten yeah like exactly. a little kitten Even a people, freaking animal Pe Peta would be all over your butt it's but so true but it's a okay human? to say that to your child your newborn child a who human literally depends on you for every single thing and it, who did not ask to be no. brought into this world no. by the way no so and you're already holding it over their head like talk about toxic yeah gross toxic already gross anyway so anyways that was fun that was really fun don't be toxic yeah don't be toxic and um Chris Jenner. Yeah. I'm looking at you. Yeah. Um, this article, also from Evie, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, is called Why Are So Many Serial Killers Porn Addicts? And mm -hmm. I kind of did a little shallow dive into this topic when we were talking about the um, the shooting that took place in Texas because mm -hmm. I wanted to – I didn't. I don't know if there actually was a connection. I was just curious because it, it seems like a, a thing. And I found – I told you this already. Like, I found it so hard to find connections everywhere i looked it was like well porn could actually be really good for you and i was like eh, i don't Ooh. think i'm looking in the right places so uh reality check it's not yeah it's not it's not um yeah and i guess it's so i, I found this article um called it's by the reward foundation which is basically an educational charity that looks at the science behind sex and love relationships and what do they know what do they know um so basically there are over 85 studies that link poor mental and emotional health to porn use these effects range from brain fog and social anxiety through to depression negative body image and flashbacks eating disorders um and uh basically porn just really has a big impact on idealized notions of body image um it's kind of interesting because so much of secular society is like just like porn's fine. Yeah, man. it's like a very normal thing. It's a very normal thing. Um, and I think that's kind of scary in a lot of ways, um, especially because Ted Bundy, who was like mm. one of the most famous serial killers ever, admitted that that was something he was addicted to. And mm -hmm. then guess what? He yeah. murdered. Like, yeah, I wrote down his quote. He um, it was before was he executed. Yeah. OK, so it was a couple. It was before he was executed. He was speaking very candidly. Um, this is his quote. He said, I've lived in prison a long time now and I've met a lot of men who were motivated to commit violence just like me. And without exception, every one of them was deeply influenced and consumed by an addiction to pornography. Gross. Yeah. And it kind of makes sense that 
watching a lot of porn would like desensitize you to other acts of violence mm-hmm. because like it's like doing drugs. I, I I liken it to doing drugs because okay, you you your tolerance builds over time. And then in order to get mm-hmm. that high, mm-hmm. you need to keep doing harder drugs yeah. or more doses. And I think it's the same with porn. Like at first you're like, oh I'm just gonna watch porn and then you, yeah. you get like mummy daddy nice sure. sex and then right and then you get desensitized and you're like yeah. i need it to be more violent or yeah. whatever well, and that's you get... another thing it's like sorry no keep going um the the porn that people are watching now is so disgusting like yeah. i like there's trends that are like br- brother like stepsister stepdad like it's that's sick and like and like abuse on women and it's right. it's so people are so desensitized to it that they don't actually realize how rigged up it is yeah and how messed up it's making people in their own brains and there's also like that's one so it's like okay we're we're producing little serial killers maybe possibly one section and then there's the other section where it's like what is it doing to young women yeah when they have when men young men have the expectations of all women being like porn stars which yeah. are, are are willing to do things that regular women are not willing to do and then they'll call them prudes and the women will feel pre- like young kids are doing I'm not going to get graphic, but they're doing more stuff yeah. than we did in our ge- generation. Like kids in high school are doing grosser, weirder stuff than ever. And it's getting younger and younger and they're experimenting with more stuff. And I think it's because of porn. Yeah, porn absolutely. Just way out of control. Well, and it, it's completely degrading for women, first of all. Like it just it is. Like, I'm sorry. There's no it's, it will never be an empowering industry for women because First of all, a couple things. One, the person you could be watching could be underage and you just don't know it. That's a huge Num- problem. It, it's a huge problem. Number two, they could be a victim of human trafficking and you're Another watching a problem. slave. Yes. So I just, th- and this, and by watching porn and continuing to watch it, you are feeding into that industry, which is enabling human trafficking and child pornography. Like you are feeding into that. So I just think that, I just think it's disgusting. And I I, I just, ugh, it just yeah, makes me there's, sick. There's a woman on Twitter who is, um, she was herself a victim of human trafficking. Her name's Eliza Blue, and I follow her on Twitter, and I, I'll put her tweets up here. Yeah. She talks nonstop. It's all she talks about, about mostly Pornhub and how many people on Pornhub are young people who are trafficked, and Pornhub has no responsibility. Yeah. They'll take it down if it's proven, but, like, there's no responsibility to verify that these girls are above 18 and are willing partners are being paid or whatever needs to take place legally to make it legal. Um, so you, like Nat just said, you could be watching porn – and you could be watching a, a victim of sexual, like sex trafficking and not even knowing it. And you are now a part of a sex, like you're- You're encouraging pro- You're it. propagating this yeah. disgusting, horrifying, tragic thing that is so rampant in society. Yeah. It's super sad. No, absolutely. Um, and according to the National Center on Sexual Exploitation, pornography fosters aggression by normalizing and depicting verbal and physical violence as enjoyable. So aggressive acts against women in porn occur at roughly eight in in eighty seven percent of the scenes. That's a huge you majority. Know what that is? That's a red that's a red, red, flag. red flag. That's a red flag. Hiller, okay. Hiller. Um, and obviously, like you mentioned, it kind of it creates unreachable standards for women. Women, um, women don't look like that, and women don't enjoy sex like that and i think like i mean there's also research that sh- research that shows consuming porn like changes the structure of your brain and it just des- it, de- it um desensitizes us mm-hmm. like it just mm-hmm. i mean guys like this is a serious thing and our society's pushing it on people i mean what is the age that young people are exposed to porn like 11 or something i think I is the know. age that's really young you're like prepubescent that's horrifying like that, that- you gotta have some safety safety parameters on your kids yes, tablets absolutely and yeah. i think like an, another side of this is like sex is such an intimate and private thing and i don't think anyone should be around well and you're having sex so why are you thinking it's okay to watch someone else have sex whether mm-hmm. they're paid to do it or not um i just think it's really gross yeah and it's and like i've mentioned it's it's different than the porn of the 80s right keep women like it's not like, playboy magazine no yeah. no it's not so, like again it's still bad but it's not like full bush soft core <laughs> like yeah. it's it's people are doing gross things and degrading women and women are acting like they are enjoying it and then that is now how men think women want to be treated and it, yeah it will rewire people's brains and it will make pe- women do things that they don't want to do and it's plus tra- it's tragic like if you're in a relationship i would i could think it's un- you're being unfaithful like you're cheating if you're if you're tiptoeing behind your spouse's back and you're watching other people get freaky, like I just think that you're cheating on them. Frankly, like I don't know if that's cheating. Like I think it's gross. 
I think it is because sex, like the Bible is really clear about sexual Maybe immorality. Maybe in a biblical sense it's cheating. I think most people would probably say it's it's not, but again, most people. But what people... if your wife didn't know about it? Yeah. And you were doing that behind yeah. her back. Like yeah. I, you know, especially, I don't well, know. It's gross. You shouldn't do it. Because like, it's also, an, it's addictive, mm-hmm. and it, which means it's therefore destructive. Yeah. And, and we're not supposed to give into temptation as Christians, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. So, and, and, and yes, our pastor has mentioned that. Um, and also, if you're in a marriage and you're watching porn behind your wife's back or your husband's back, um, you're not going to be intimate with your partner in the same way right. and willing to the same extent that you should be. And you're going to have these, like I have mentioned, expectations or you're not going to be inter- interested in a, in it at all because you've already serviced yourself. Yeah, no, it's true. Um, there's a study, a uh, 2008 study of sexuality in France, uh, which found that 20% of men 18 to 24 had no interest in sex or sexual activity after watching porn. Yeah. Like that's teenagers. Like, is, isn't that when you're usually yeah. your most like yeah. primal about sex? Yeah. Like that's scary. Well, it's and it's kind of like, sorry. No, I, I was just going to say it can also cause erectile dysfunction and as you mentioned, can influence the physical power dynamics in a sexual relationship. So Mm -hmm. it reminds me of how I think we've mentioned. I mean, it reminds me of MGTOW, like those men are going their own way and they don't want anything to do with women. But I guarantee they're watching pornography. Yeah. And then B, it reminds me of how men don't want to get married because I had this theory that was like, well, of course, because they have Uber Eats and pornography. Yeah. Like what do they like? What incentive? What incentive do you have like for and obviously not all women cook and yada yada. But like in a traditional sense, like a woman is going to care for her family and she's going to care for the home. And if you have uber eats and pornography you literally don't really need a girl that's true and and maybe society's been pushing this on us Mm. on purpose almost like um well when bill gates talks about how we have uh, too high of a population we need to decrease the population right it's almost a red flag it's it's almost (laughs) as if every facet of secular society is doing everything they can to make sure that men and women aren't getting married because they know that that is the bedrock of a successful and blossoming society. And they yeah. don't want society to blossom no. because they want us to own nothing and be happy, yeah. y'all. Yikes. They want us to consume media and consume online goods and consume Uber Eats and pornography and just stay in our little And be fat and sad. And miserable. And then we'll depend on the government because we're sick from all the food that we're eating. And we have diabetes and we're depressed. So we're on- No vitamin D. And yeah. Yeah. It's terrifying. Right. So things are I think the the point of this conversation, too, is not necessarily to condemn people. I think there's condemn. Condemnation. I think there's, I think there's <laughs> grace for you. If, if you know, if you're suffering from a porn addiction, there is people want to help you. Mm-hmm. Um, I would just say, like, just try stopping. Yeah. And, and you and know, see how that goes. Repent, too, maybe. Um, yeah. Pick up another hobby. Pick up another hobby. But I think just as a rule of thumb when it comes to anything that society deems as okay, especially when it comes to like sexual immoralities. I mean, look at all the crazy stuff we're seeing at the pride parades these days. Like society wants us to think all this is okay. Yeah. It's okay to shake your wiener in front of eight year olds Mm -hmm. in a parade, you know, Mm -hmm. like as a rule of thumb, anything that society is pushing on you, just say no. Yeah. You should definitely question it. Yeah. Strongly. You know, like just sit with it. Yeah. You know, with Look a bowl of carrots and yeah. just think about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I think so. That's all I have to say, I think. Really? Yeah. Is it? I could probably talk for like eight <laughs> more hours, but is there any is there any final thoughts before we round out the show? Round out the show. The sure. Um, you know. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess that's the sure. Buy our merch. Buy our merch. Buy our merch. Abort the government. Misunderstoodmerch.com. Yeah, these are just the new designs. We have older ones. Not even old, but because they're still pretty new. They're 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 sexy. They're fire. They are they so are fire. fire. Yeah. We should have a we should have like a porn shirt, like a no porn shirt. Yeah, we'll think it's of just one. Porn with a cross. Yeah. That's That'll a good, good idea. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll think of one. Um okay. anyway, so this show airs every Tuesday at 7 p.m. at misunderstoodshow.ca. Be sure to subscribe to Rebel News Plus so you can get early access to the show. The sure early access. And if you're not a Rebel News Plus subscriber yet, that's okay. You can still listen to the show on all of your favorite streaming platforms. For free. But you mi- yeah, for free. But you miss you, miss this. you wouldn't get to see these shirts. You don't get to see the shirts. They're and cute. I put in all sorts of articles and stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff. There's a lot of cool stuff there's in there. Cool stuff. There's cool stuff in there. So you're going to want to subscribe when you can afford it. 
Yeah. Um, Because, you know, times are tough right now. Times are turf. Yeah, they are. Um, But you can also see our faces a few days later every Saturday at 2 p.m. at Watch Misunderstood Show. No, sorry. Watch Misunderstood.com because the show will drop for free. For free. Free. Anyway. All right. Oh, and follow us on social media. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you should. We are pr- we have some fun skits that we, we do, do, and you should definitely watch and, them. And um, Andrew Trapados from Andrew Says helps us out with those. Yeah. He's very he's a, funny. He's a really big fan of their show. He is our biggest fan. Yeah. No matter, don't listen to what he says. No. He loves it. He loves it. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, okay. Sure. Love you, bye. Love you, bye.